So about a month ago, I went to war with Hellcastle. Basically, both Hellcastle and myself recruited the members of our Discord to join this insane custom war server called MC Nations. And it ended up turning into a two hour long battle between our armies. Unfortunately, right as we began to near the final battle, the server just crashed from too many people trying to join in on the fight. So we rescheduled our battle and the owner of the server spent the next month or so just fine tuning things on the server so that it could handle all the people who wanted to join. Now, any normal person would have probably just gone back to their normal routine for the next month while they waited for the rematch. But not me. No. I immediately began strategizing on how I could ensure that I take down Hellcastle once and for all in our next battle. And after many hours spent pondering, I realized the master of wars was right in front of me. Technoblade. You see, as I'm sure the vast majority of you are aware, Techno successfully won a nearly year-long battle against Squid Kid known as the Great Potato War. So I began to study the tactics he used in the Potato War, but it wasn't before long that I realized endlessly farming potatoes for upwards of 17 hours a day wasn't going to be of much use to me. However, in Techno's videos, he often referenced someone who could potentially help me with my battle, Sun Tzu. And naturally, after coming to this realization, I hastily purchased a copy of Sun Tzu's famous book, The Art of War. At this point though, only about a week remained until my rematch with Hellcastle, so I spent the next week closely studying this book and trying to learn from it as much as I could. And when it was finally time for our battle to occur, I took all this newfound information and went to war. Really quickly though guys, before we get into the actual war, I just gotta say a big, big shout out to Nations MC for sponsoring this video. I have literally not accepted a sponsorship for this channel in about a year now, so you guys should just know that by me partnering with them at all, I really like this server and really believe in what they're doing. Not only are the mechanics and gameplay of the server super, super cool, but I think just the community itself is awesome as well. I mean, the owner even literally went out of his way and removed a bunch of pay to win stuff they had on their store beforehand because mine and Hellcastle's communities weren't really down with it. But yeah, if you guys are interested in playing the server, all the information you need to join will be down in the description below, so uh, check it out. And of course, need to give you guys a quick reminder that we are now less than 8,000 subscribers away from the big 100k sub, so please, if you enjoy this video and have not already subscribed, consider doing so, I would really, really appreciate it. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the war. So basically, the way the gameplay on this server works is that our initial goal is to capture as many of these resource towns as possible to improve our gear, and then ultimately to capture the other nations. For this battle in particular, my nation was Egypt and Hellcastle was playing Rome. Now, there are some other nations that participated in this battle, uh, but they were mostly just like one to three players, so they'll get destroyed pretty early on. That being said though, capturing these nations can still prove to be really, really useful because when you capture them, you get a bunch of resources. And in my time reading the Art of War, I stumbled upon this quote from Sun Tzu. In war, the way is to avoid what is strong and to strike at what is weak. And well, it's pretty obvious that a literal one person nation is going to be pretty weak in comparison to like a 50 to 60 person nation. So within like two minutes of the game starting, we just annihilated Persia and took all of their resources. So that's good. We get 421 redstone and 631 iron ingots. So that was smart, man. That was the Sun Tzu strategy, okay? We captured the smallest nation of one person and we got all their resources now. That's big, that's big. Unfortunately, it seemed like Hellcastle's army had this same idea in mind because only a few minutes after we had captured Persia, Rome captured a small nation of their own. Okay, Rome took out Dasha. Oof, they got a lot of gold, a lot of iron and a decent amount of redstone as well. That actually is not great for us. And after taking a quick peek at the tab list, I realized Hellcastle's army was even a bit larger than mine. So attempting to win this battle with a smaller army was not gonna be an easy task. I decided that our best hope for winning was gonna be to progress our gear faster than they could. So with redstone being the primary resource needed to upgrade gear, we targeted a nearby redstone town that was currently controlled by Rome. Unfortunately, as we attempted to actually capture the town, a bunch of Rome's troops warped in with iron armor, which was much better gear than our army currently had, and pretty much wiped us all out. 
And then, almost immediately after, they began to try and take one of our redstone towns. Fortunately, we were able to hold them off from breaching into this town, but it quickly became apparent that we all needed to upgrade our armor to iron if we wanted to have any chance of conquering these towns. So I made my way over to one of the iron resource towns we owned and started mining. And after getting all the members of our army geared up, we made our way back to that redstone resource town to try and strike again. Unfortunately, in order to attempt to capture this town, we had to cross a large body of water, which may not seem intimidating to most people, but one of the things I learned during reading The Art of War is that Sun Tzu did not like crossing bodies of water. In fact, he has this quote which says, After crossing a river, you should get far away from it. So we did just that and sprinted away from the body of water as soon as we crossed it. Now, get far away from the water. We do not want to fight around the water, so let's just get away from it. Unfortunately, it seemed that once again Rome was keen to our plans, because as we approached the town, Rome struck back with the army of their own, and they struck back hard. Not only did they stop us from taking their redstone town, but they once again launched an attack of their own, and this time with a very large army, forcing all of our troops to warp into the town to defend. This is Diamond Department, which would be very helpful to them. God, they have a lot of numbers here. Do your best, stay grouped, don't let him pick you off. Okay, we kind of got pushed back a little bit. Oh, this guy's behind the lines, let's take this guy. He's Oh, it's Hellcastle. <laughs> get him, get him, get him. He's separated, he's separated. Thankfully for us, many of the attackers made the grave mistake of splitting off from the group, allowing us to pick them off as a straggler, letting our army embrace this Sun Tzu quote. We can form a single united body while the enemy must split up into fractions. If we see someone like this with like partial netherite, that actually could be people to target. Yes, pick off the stragglers just like this. Perfect, perfect, perfect. They're pushing back. Keep just keep pushing onto them, but we keep numbers on them. We don't don't get singled out. Like, hopefully we're pushing together here, because we don't want to get singled out with just like you know two of us trying to fight four. As the enemy retreated their way uphill, I warned my army not to advance after them. As Sun Tzu had also said, it is a military axiom not to advance uphill against the enemy, nor to oppose him when he comes downhill. Unfortunately for me, apparently my army didn't value what I said at all because they chased him uphill anyway. <laughs> and with our town now successfully defended from Rome's forces, we decided to start planning our next attack. This time we targeted a different redstone town that was currently controlled by Rome. And once again, at first it seemed pretty promising. As we planted the bomb at the town, not too many troops from Rome showed up and it looked like we might have a shot at taking it. But then seemingly all of Rome's army showed up and pushed us back hard. And as members of our army started dropping like flies, I called it quits and attempted to flee to a nearby island. And for a second, I thought I had actually survived, but eventually Rome's troops caught up to me and finished me off. They had a boat. Um, it's over. It's over. No. <laughs> no. Now, at this point, our forces were in desperate need of a morale boost. We had now made three unsuccessful attempts at capturing Rome-controlled towns, and we weren't feeling too confident. At this stage in the game though, it wasn't really even that important for us to get redstone anymore because we had unlocked most of the things that it's used for. So this time we instead set our sights on an emerald resource town. Because with emeralds being the currency used to purchase netherite armor, having access to another emerald mine would be crucial. As we began advancing into the town though, we were once again met with a strong pushback from Rome. Unfortunately, as I was taken out by members of the Rome army, I thought it was looking bleak for us once again. Much to my surprise though, as I respawned, I was greeted with the message that we had successfully captured the town, putting us right back on track to actually try and win this whole thing. Can we, can we warp back there now? We can. We, we just warp directly to Argos. Just warp directly there. We got the capture. Uh, dude, we, we did it. We did it, boys. Let's go. Okay, we're not going to have great gear, but we can just, we can literally just keep throwing numbers at them. Yes, that, dude, that was huge. That guy was geared out. That was a that was another right piece right there. Again, another another right piece. Everyone go in on this guy. Unsurprisingly, Hellcastle's army was not happy with this defeat. And only a few moments later, Rome simultaneously launched attacks on three separate towns we controlled. Somehow, though, we managed to fend off the attacks on all three of these towns. Spam it out. Oh my god! Oh my god, we barely got that. 
GG, okay. Wait, there, there is one guy out here. There's one guy, yeah. While Rome's forces were scattered, we launched an attack of our own. This time, we targeted a diamond resource town because the amount of netherite sets that any nation can acquire is limited. So obviously, having access to a diamond mine so that we can supplement netherite armor with diamond gear would be pretty useful. Focus him, focus him. Yeah, we got him, we got him. <gasps> that's huge. Guys, that's actually huge. Good stuff, boys. Good stuff. Let's go. Oh my god, wait, that, that's a big defense. I'm, I'm backing off. Okay, I got half netherite going though now. That regen pot came in clutch. This is big. We, we got it back. Nisa's back. Let's go, guys. Okay, pick off, pick off the rest that are here now. But if we get this wave, they can't come back now. We got the town. We just got to try and hold it now. Yes, yeah, this is perfect. What, we're do this is great strategy here. All, all focus on the same ones. This is going to work so well. Let's go. With this diamond town now successfully captured and defended from Rome, momentum was fully in our favor. So our army once again took inspiration from the wise Sun Tzu and his quote, appear at points where the enemy must hasten to defend, march swiftly to places where you are not expected. And so we attacked an iron resource town owned by Rome, solely because of the fact that they would not be expecting us to do so, and we could potentially pick off a few of their members in the defense. We wanna try and get their good armor guys again. No, 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 no. Oh my God, what did he have? Dude, I had no chance. I had absolutely no chance there. That's a big loss. I was kind of geared up. Unfortunately, this first attempt at taking this town was not a success. But Rome's defense had seemed relatively weak, so we gathered a larger amount of our troops and struck again. As long as we hold this cap, we cut off their respawns, and they have no way out. Um, where is he? He's just spamming pots right now. Just stay focused on this guy. He's spamming pots. We should be able to get him, though. This guy's full netherite, so that'll be a loss for them. We just gotta get him. Okay, it is not fair that that guy is somehow still alive. <laughs> that should not be possible. God, they have a lot. What am I getting hit by? I need to back out for a second. I literally don't know what I'm getting hit by. We got Malva. We got Malva. TP. Guys, if you're not at Malva already, you can just insta-warp here now that we captured it. We had successfully captured another one of Rome's towns, and it was starting to look like we really did have a chance at winning this thing, despite Rome's massive size advantage over us. So we carefully planned our next attack and decided to hit Rome right where it would hurt, at the original redstone resource town that they had successfully defended from us twice before. We've got this, we've got this. Roadman Baca died, I don't know how. F's in chat, F's in chat. Okay, are we pushing in? I don't want to lead the charge because my setup is more focused on just surviving. I, I'm not. I, I'm just not going to take damage. If they're not going to push us, I'm not going to let them pick us off from above. I'll take the fights indoors. Take the fights indoors, honestly. Just sit in houses. I'm taking this guy out. Blood. I want blood. Give me blood. <laughs> okay, I need to heal. Take their horses out. Yes. No survivors. Burn the town. Another Rome town had been captured, and not only was the momentum just fully in our favor at this point, but we were leading Rome 11 towns to only six. As long as we didn't make any crucial errors at this point, it seemed like we had this war on lock. And to make things seem even better for us, another one of my strategies that I had taken from Sun Tzu was starting to play out. You see, in the Art of War, Sun Tzu says, Knowledge of the enemy's disposition can only be obtained from other men. Which essentially is just saying that if you want to know what the other army is doing, you gotta get yourself a spy. So naturally, before the war had begun, I actually planted one of my most trusted Discord members into Hellcastle's army to not only feed us information, but to feed us their resources as well. This may seem scummy to many of you, but just remember, this is war. Everything is fair in war. Wait, Garrett has a gift. My spy! Another gift for my spy! I'm coming, Garrett, I'm coming. Garrett's actually the best spy ever, literally taking resources from their towns and feeding me. <laughs> yes. The inside man, we got the inside. They're, they're, they're probably gonna murder you, so hopefully I can get it before they kill you. Maybe stay towards the side, Garrett, so they don't just come, so my team doesn't come murder you. Where are you at? 
Oh, there he is. My spy. Wait. Oh, it's your horse. I was going to say. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. He's good. He's good. He's friendly. 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 <laughs> run, Garrett, run. Clearly at this point, we had Rome on their heels. And while some people might let up the pressure a little bit once they have such a big advantage, we did the exact opposite and pushed even more aggressively. This time we targeted another diamond resource town that was controlled by Rome, but they didn't put up much of a fight at all. Within only a minute or two of beginning our siege, we had already successfully captured the town. Oh yeah, everyone, yeah, everyone TP to Syracuse and we'll take them from the back. True, that's big brain. Actually big brain. That's where they all came from. We, we, so we TP, yeah, TP up to Syracuse and then we're, we're gonna be coming from behind them. Yep, here we go. <gasps> he's cut off, he's cut off. Yes, they're done. They're literally done. This place is secured. It's over for him. It's over for him. Clearly, Rome was weak, and if we applied just a little bit more pressure, they might collapse. So we took this opportunity and made a push on their capital to try and end this war once and for all. Unless they're like, you know, posing a direct threat. And I'm going to try and be more of a bower. Or a bower? I think the proper term is archer, right? <laughs> Thank you. Like these guys up here, I'm not exactly sure what we should be doing about them. But those are the guys who cause us a lot of grief. Gatehouse captured. Okay, that's actually big guys. We're already on the second stage of capturing. Like this is this is it. If we capture the, if we capture this their Rome here, it's over. We still have two we still have two spots that so we can capture the market and then it's the capital. So now this is where they're gonna start putting up like literally all their defenses. So again, if you can take out the big boys with actual armor, it helps us a lot. Like, any, if they're wearing any armor at all, it's big. But just hold hold the capture, okay? Don't push up too far. Don't get too excited. Oh, okay, now the Citadel. Yes, here we go. So this is literally it. If we capture this, it's one. Don't chase, though. Okay. See, this is, this is bad because we're forced to go uphill. You don't want to go uphill, but unfortunately we're forced to here. If you can, use your horse to get up because the horse will fly up here, but I think mine's too far back. Now, I believe when they spawn at the Citadel here, they will have better armor just by default. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if I'm making that up or not. But yeah, okay, we got netherite behind, netherite behind us. And they're potting up as well. Yeah, he's hitting big. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die here. He's hitting way too big. Yeah, I mean... Those were massive hits. It's okay. The fact that we're even getting an attempt on their citadel is pretty big. We're losing a lot of numbers there though. So close. We had gotten to the final part of the final battle only for Rome to put up a successful defense and take us out. Unless they actually hadn't. Because as I was just a sitting duck at our nation's capital after having died, the remaining forces we had pushing their citadel won the battle. They've done it. We did it! We did it! Let's go! GG! <laughs> I wasn't there for the final assault, but we did it! Well, we at least got to see what happened. I thought we lost too many! That's huge, boys! We were outnumbered, like, at probably like 65 to 45, and we pulled that off! Let's go! GG, guys, that is huge. We, dude, that was a huge comeback, dude. That was big underdog status. Let's go, boys. Let's go. So yeah, an absolutely crazy battle. Big shout out to Hellcastle for taking part on the other side of that. I will obviously be linking him down below. And of course, once again, a big thank you to MC Nations for sponsoring this video. Their stuff will also be down in the description. So make sure you check them out if you thought this looked really cool. And I don't know how you could have thought that this didn't look really cool. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in my next video, hopefully very, very soon. See you guys then. Peace.